Many narcissists have the mentality, regardless of his or her lack of emotional regulation, to go out into a material world and become very successful while having a string of personal dysfunctional relationships. He or she has denounced love, not the ability to financially gain, while keeping a lot of people around him or her for source supply. Narcissists and those with a close personality usually do not have any issues beginning relationships with many people. He or she has a pattern of investing in a stream of unhealthy relationships and leaving many of them broken. Let's move forward. Emotion is energy in motion. As a narcissist taps into the energy field of another during energy transference, the emotions of others are used as a drug in order to feel better and feed his or her false self image. The cluster of personality in a narcissist will not take half of you. They want 100 of you. Just let that sink in for a minute. The cluster of personality in a narcissist will make sure that you do not have a support base. He or she will not support you in getting better and thriving forward and recovering or getting past the unhealthy relationship with him or her. They don't want you to because as soon as you do, it's game over for them and they know it's a game changer for you. The cluster of personality in the narcissist has to have a very jaded perception of all of their targeted praise and all of their current suppliers in order to maintain the false self image. So the cluster of personality in the narcissist, they will never see you as you really are. Even as you thrive forward, the narcissist in a cluster of personality cannot see you as whole, healthy, and thriving. They can't. Psychologically, they will have a breakdown if they were forced to see you as you truly are in all of your awesomeness. The narcissist and the cluster personality will not risk themselves for you under any circumstances. The false self image of the narcissist and the cluster personality reigns supreme all day, every day for all of their days. In order for the narcissist to continue to survive, you must be a person who remains in a state of brokenness. One of the best things for a narcissist is for people around him or her to continue to hang in there, give second chances for the umpteenth time and idealize the narcissist along with the relationship. Distractions to attempt to keep the narcissist pleased will keep one from doing any shadow work at all. It's, it comes down to that. The choice is, are you going to continue to comply to the unrealistic expectations of the narcissist? Or are you going to commit to your own healing and thriving forward? It really does, at the end of the day, come down to that. Can you imagine the rest of your life without a relationship with a narcissist while setting your emotions and ego aside? See, when we set our emotions and ego aside, that is called emotional discipline. That is also practicing personal boundaries. That is also practicing self-preservation. The narcissist and the cluster personality, they cannot draw from that. They are left starving when you place your emotions and your ego aside. So if you can imagine or envision the rest of your life without a relationship with him or her, the narcissist that is, and you set your emotions and ego aside, because the narcissist and the cluster personality, they want you to continue to focus on him or her. So if you continue to focus on him or her, whether it's stemming from having good emotions or not, the cluster personality remains well supplied. When one thinks or focuses upon anything, this is another way that he or she can have intentions, regardless if they clarify them to others or not. Mental focus plus intentions equals manifestations. So when we do this, there are certain things, whether pleasant or not pleasant, will manifest in our life. Second point, narcissists like to be paid attention to, whether that attention is deemed negative or positive. The narcissist is well supplied as long as one chooses to pay him or her attention. 
the narcissist counts on your willingness to recall and focus upon the part of your past that is painful, as long as it includes him or her. We are all comprised of energy. Emotion is energy that is in motion. The process of thinking, like feeling, takes energy. Humans tend to be creatures of habit. Therefore, what is familiar is what one usually gravitates towards. Unresolved traumatic and painful experiences are not excluded in this dynamic. Next point. Repeated thoughts of the narcissist and certain emotions that come with it is a habit that may be necessary to break down in order to effectively heal and thrive forward. Beating yourself up is not the answer. However, clarifying your intentions can be proven to be a real game changer. When you clarify your intentions, this will help you to manifest certain things in people and places in your life, whether that's pleasant or not pleasant. So beating yourself up isn't the answer. Just take steps to practice clarifying your intentions in regards to anything, whether that is whether or not to take a particular job, whether or not to become involved romantically with a person, whether or not to start a new relationship or not. Clarifying your intentions can absolutely prove to be a game changer. See, repeated thoughts of the narcissist and certain emotions that come with it is a habit. So this particular habit, we can probably say <laughs> it's a bad habit. It's a habit nonetheless. See, human beings are creatures of habit. This is nothing to beat yourself up about. It's just, again, a human experience. So one way to look at how you continue to think about the narcissist is to just see it as a habit that you are working to break. Envision yourself breaking that habit, if necessary. As long as one chooses to become reactionary instead of responsive, whereas the narcissist is concerned, he or she will continue to unconsciously provide supply to the narcissist due to energy transference. Your energy belongs to you. By focusing upon the narcissist, you unconsciously choose to allow the energy behind your thoughts and emotions to travel to the narcissist due to habit. So as I stated before in the previous slide, when we repeatedly think of the narcissist or focus on the narcissist, this is a habit that can be broken. Usually a person who continues to focus upon the narcissist, especially after going no contact, he or she would like to stop thinking about the narcissist so much. But again, this is not very easy, but it can be done. Anything you can think of right now in your attempts to forget a painful experience, this is what we do. But the body remembers regardless of those attempts to forget. Let's move forward. How to transform and release energy. Number one, identify the source of the energy. If it is not yours, do not claim this it. This is something a lot of us, including myself, have made the mistake of doing. And that is claiming what isn't ours. Okay, the narcissist and the cosmic personality, they absolutely love it when this happens. When their source suppliers 
claim their dysfunctional behavior. So the narcissist and custom personality likes it when others claim their shenanigans and they put up and comply with all of the diabolical tactics. So when a person identifies the source of the energy, whether it is positive or negative, if it belongs to him or her, okay, they'll claim it. But if it belongs to the narcissist or the cosmic personality, it is best not to claim it. This is another way that they hold on to toxic energy and they're not transforming Instead, it. Instead, what they're doing is they are internalizing it. He or she is holding on to it and they're claiming something that doesn't belong to them. This is why they continue to be hurt and also which prolongs their suffering. Number two, practice emotional discipline. Check your ego while keeping your emotions in check. This one was a very tough one for me years ago. Very tough. Because I wanted to make the cluster B personality wrong. Checking the ego while keeping the emotions in check instead of becoming reactionary. This is a tough one, especially when the narcissist and the cluster B personality is going full speed ahead with their diabolical tactics for source supply. When they're going full speed ahead with their shenanigans. They're pulling all kinds of shenanigans. And you can't believe where they're coming from. It's like, okay, every time you turn around, there's something else. When you, when you think you've gotten over one thing, here they come with something else. So it is very difficult. I've been through this. I understand. Very difficult to check one's own ego and keep their emotions in check when this is happening. Simply put, when they're checking the ego and when they're keeping their emotions in check, what they're doing overall is he or she is practicing emotional discipline. They're balancing things. They're not just staying focused on how they feel. And they're not just staying focused on what they think. They're balancing the two. So to check the ego means that they're not claiming the stuff that belongs to the narcissist. They're able to keep their emotions in check because they're not becoming reactionary. Everything the narcissist says or does, it is not going to turn into a big fight. The narcissist and cluster personality, they live for that. So by checking the ego and keeping the emotions in check does a lot of wonderful things for that person. Okay, and I want to encourage you all to start today to do this. It's not easy. I'm not going to even sugarcoat it. There will be times that you may slip up. I've done this. There may be times that you may become reactionary because you're practicing. You're just starting. Don't be so hard on yourself. That's the narcissist's job, okay? You don't want to pick up where they left off. So check your ego while keeping your emotions in check. And there's so much information on how to do this, okay? So I just want to encourage everyone again to check the ego while keeping your emotions in check. Simply put, what you're doing is you're practicing emotional discipline. Number three, don't go against the energy. Stop telling yourself what it should be. Take steps to accept what it is. This is another way of taking those rose colored glasses off. This is the reality check that I know a lot of us dread, but it's going to be a game changer. Stop telling yourself who the narcissist is or who you think he or she should be. Stop telling yourself the condition of the dysfunctional relationship. The key word is dysfunctional, meaning the quality of that relationship is low or it is poor. Take steps to accept the reality. Don't go against the energy. If it doesn't feel good to you, don't psych yourself into believing it is good for you. I've made this mistake. A lot of people who are involved with narcissists and cluster personalities make this mistake. Don't go against the energy. If it don't feel good to you, it's probably toxic. Trust your own instincts, trust your own intuition. Number four, learn to be the portal or gateway that energy passes rather than a sponge that soaks up and internalizes pain, trauma, and dysfunction. The narcissist absolutely loves it when other people choose to be the sponge to soak up all of their toxicity. 
to soak up and internalize the pain, the trauma, the dysfunction, all of the crazy making, all of the gaslighting techniques, all of the diabolical tactics for source supply, all of the shenanigans that he or she pulls. If you're internalizing all this and you're carrying all that, you're not being a portal or a gateway that the energy passes. You may be a portal or a gateway, but you're not allowing the energy to pass. Rather, you're being the sponge that soaks up all of the toxicity. So take small steps to learn how to be the portal or the gateway that energy passes This through. is another way of, of not holding on to the toxic energy. If that energy doesn't feel good to you, trust that it is not good for you. Allow it to pass. Do not claim what's not yours. That's another way to allow the energy to pass. Now, this does not mean you won't get pissed off, <laughs> okay? This does not mean that you won't feel brokenhearted at times. This does not mean that you will not experience other unpleasant emotions. You're human, having a human experience, okay? There's the up, there's the down. I want to encourage everyone to discontinue, to tell yourself that you deserve the crazy making that's happening. You deserve, somehow, you're a bad person and that you deserve what the narcissist and cluster personality is dishing out to you. No, you do not. We're human beings having a human experience. You choose to give your pain a voice. Don't walk around being quiet all the time. Don't internalize it. Go talk to somebody. Write it down. Keep a journal. Get a tape recorder and start talking everything you ever wanted to say to that person. Let it go. Do it on your own time and do it in your own space. Do not, if you can help it, give the narcissist and cluster personality that satisfaction that they have affected you in such a way that you're walking around sad and angry all the time. Don't give them that show. Take some time out for yourself. Choose a place that is of refuge for you. It could be going out to nature, into nature. It could be going to the beach. It could be taking a nature trail or a nature hike or going camping, getting away for a little while. Take, take that time out for yourself. Write things down. Record it. Get it out of you. Constructively find a way to get it out of you. Constructively find a way to express that you have been hurt. Your heart has been broken. You're angry about it. Okay? There, it doesn't make sense to continue to internalize it and carry that. The narcissist and the cultural of personality, they are not going to like you giving your pain a voice, but boo-hoo, too bad, so sad. Mm -hmm.